Hello everyone, I'm Saidi Zadi and today I'm going to present our paper on unsupervised microscopy denoising with Bayesian networks. Confocal fluorescence microscopy is an imaging technique in biology that provides visualization of cells and tissues. As you see in this image, CFM imaging enables researchers to study the morphological and structural characteristics of the cell. However, the excitation laser power used in CFM imaging introduces considerable side effects on the cells. To address this, CFM images need to be acquired in a low illumination environment, but acquisition in low illumination affects the number of collected photons and this leads to Poisson noise contamination in the resultant images. Nowadays, a common workaround to resolve this challenge is to perform software-based denoising after image acquisition and before any biological analysis. In this paper, we train a neural network that takes the noisy images and produces noise-free estimates. Our proposed training framework is unsupervised in the sense that it doesn't need the clean images during the training. Let's consider a given input as a bag of n small patches. For each patch, like the yellow one here, we can collect a set of most similar patches like the ones highlighted with orange borders. In the Bayesian reasoning framework, the optimal denoise patch, denoted here by x tilde, is the one maximizing the posterior distribution conditioned by the noisy patch and the set of nearest patches. With Bayes' rule, we can rewrite the posterior as the product of observation likelihood and the prior distribution. In non-local Bayesian filtering, the prior is approximated by a multivariate Gaussian distribution parameterized with its mean and covariance, and the maximum likelihood estimates are used to find the mean and covariance from the existing samples. Likewise, the observation likelihood is a Gaussian whose mean MY is the same as the MX. For Poisson noise, the covariance of the observation likelihood denoted by CY can be calculated using this equation. More details about these equations can be found in the paper. Given these Gaussian models, the MAP estimates for the noise-free patch can be obtained using this closed-form expression. We propose to leverage the strengths of patchwise non-local Bayesian filtering and incorporate it into deep neural networks. Therefore, we develop a method consisting of two subnetworks, the nearest neighbor and the prior network. We'll present their details in the next slides. The objective for the nearest neighbor network is to return the k-most similar patches to the query patch. To do so, we tailor the entry network by plots at all to our framework. We firstly crop the full image into multiple smaller regions. For each region, we extract 5x5 five five patches and fit them to three convolutional layers to extract embedding features. Then the similarity distances between all pairs of patches are calculated and based on these distances, the NL selection module returns the indices of the most similar patches and stacks them across the channel dimension. In NL selection, the indices of the nearest neighbors are inferred by sampling from a K-way categorical distribution. As you see on the right side figure, to find the 1NN patch, the categorization logics of being 1NN for all patches are calculated and the winner is selected. The winning patch is discarded for the 2NN inference by setting its distance from all patches to infinity. For 2NN and 3NN, the new logics based on the updated distances are calculated and selection continues. The objective of the prior network is to provide a more robust learning based estimator for the mean and covariance of the prior distribution. We borrow the simple architecture from the DNCNN model consisting of convolutional Lee Curello and Batch norm layers with two tails at the end to learn the mapping from nearest neighbor patches to MX and CX. From a statistical point of view, the predicted covariance metrics must be symmetric and positive semi-definite. Therefore, we adopt the Koleski decomposition to ensure this. In particular, the covariance matrix is constructed as a product of a low triangular decomposition matrix and its transpose. So our network only predicts the elements of the triangular matrix. We further need to make sure that the element values uh, in the predicted triangular matrix are all non-negative. For the loss function, we validate the observation likelihood that is the Gaussian with MY and CY over the observed patches. Specifically, we calculate MY and CY from the predicted MX and CX and minimize the negative log of observation likelihood over the observed noisy patches to guide the learning in favor of giving accurate estimates of MX and CX. When the network converts, we denoise a corrupted patch by feeding its inferred neighbors to the prior network and estimating MX and CX, followed by calculating the CY. 
Then the MAP equation is used to obtain the denoise patch. An interesting interpretation of this equation is that the MAP expects a denoise patch to be equal to the MX while adapting the ultimate output by taking into account the influence of the observation likelihood. In this slide, we show the qualitative results of a representative sample from the test set. We compare two variants of our proposed methods to noise to solve and noise to true approaches. The first variant is NLBCNNS, where the patch size is set to 1. This variant helps us to investigate patch size versus pixel-wise denoising. NLBCNNP is the second variant of our proposed method, where patch size is set to 5. Noise to self approach results in overestimates reconstructions of the regions with rich textures, for example in this region. The reason is that noise to self uses the noisy context around the central pixel to estimate the denoised pixel and doesn't exploit the information from the central noisy observation. NLBCNNS exploits the non local similar pixels shown by red circles along, along with the observed noisy input to infer the denoised pixel. This leads to a spiky predictions, which demonstrates the fact that the neighborhood consistes, consistency is not taken into account. In NLBCNNP, the non-local patches within the image are employed to estimate the denoised patch. As similar patches are likely to have similar appearances like edges, the spiky predictions can be alleviated and sharper patterns can be obtained compared to the noise to solve. Lastly, in noise to true, the noisy pixel is directly mapped to the clean counterpart, which explains its superior performance against unsupervised approaches. For the quantitative assessment, we compare NLBCNN to six competing methods listed here in terms of PSNR and SSIM. We have taken the scores for other competing methods from the benchmark by Zhang et al. and probabilistic noise to void paper. For the BPAE sets, NLBCNNP outperforms non-local mean, noise to self, and BM3D while lagging behind the noise to noise and noise to true methods. The red and green boxes show the loser and winning methods respectively. Note that in noise to true, the network observes the clean ground truth during the training, and in noise to noise, different noisy realizations of the same image are given as the input and output to the network. Therefore, it was not surprising to see better performance by noise to noise and noise to true in general. For the mouse brain set, noise NLBC and NP fails to pit the probabilistic noise to void model, but it performs slightly better than it in the zebrafish set. Probabilistic noise to void is a very powerful method that learns the noise model and uses it in the probabilistic reasoning framework. An interesting observation in the zebrafish set is that NLBCNNP and probabilistic noise to void outperforms the noise to true method. This means that accessing the clean data does not always make the models more powerful, while more efficient network designs can compensate for the missing ground truths. In this slide, we examine the impact of kernel size and the number of selected similar patches on the denoising performance. The color bars for different patch sizes in the figure on the left show that the denoising performance improves as we increase the number of retrieved similar patches from 4 to 8. However, increasing the number of patches to 16 does not lead to improved performance. This is expected as the retrieved patches become less similar to the observed patch as the K increases. Considering fixed K equal to 8, the red polyline shows the effect of patch size on the performance. We note that patch size 5 outperforms patch size 1, which motivates us for using patches instead of pixel-wise predictions. However, performance drops for patch size 7, since larger size patches are more heterogeneous and thus finding more similar patches become less probable. In the next experiment, we study the role of non-local patch retrievals versus the local patch selection strategy with K and patch size fixed to 8 and 5 respectively. For the local scenario, non-overlapping adjacent patches are replaced with the non-local ones. On the right side figure, we can observe that denoising with non-local patches outperforms denoising with local patches. Here's the conclusion. Our proposed NLBCNN model is an integration of classic denoising and deep learning models. Our experiments show that patch-wise training leads to better results than the pixel-wise enhancements. Also, our results indicated that efficient design could help the unsupervised model to win over the supervised cases. The ablation studies revealed that increasing the number of retrieved patches is not always beneficial to the denoising performance and increasing the patch size beyond a certain threshold could result in inferior performance. Lastly, we observed that non-local denoising is better than local denoising.
Thank you for watching this video.